Hello and welcome to iQuantas YouTube channel. Today I'll be discussing what to do in the last two months specifically for LR and DI. By the way, we are coming up with two new things, LRDA 70, that's by Mr. Indrajit Singh, the CEO and founder of iQuanta, and LRDA Inception, that is done by uh, the faculty members at uh, iQuanta, we'll be doing 50 sets over 50 high quality sets. So let's deep dive into what all things are we going to do and how can you boost your scores. So <clears throat> there's one thing which happened in 2020, that out of LRDA 70, there was one set that was directly asked in CAT. How cool is that, isn't it? And there's a screenshot, the, the testimonial that people have shared with us. Now, let us discuss what are the most important CAT LRDA topics and based on that, what we have done. So, <clears throat> broadly, LRDA can be classified as logical reasoning and data interpretation. They're different, different topics and subtopics out of there. So, first is puzzles, LR puzzles. In this, there can be four types of puzzles broadly. One is arrangement puzzle. So, a lot of data, a lot of information is given to you, statements are given to you, which can be in terms of like there's some people who like some diff some color, some cuisine or whatever, different things. So, one person can like a color, he can live in some um, um, city or uh, he has a kind of affinity, affinity towards some kind of food. So, all those data will be given to you in terms of statements and you have to arrange them accordingly and that is what Arjun Puzzle is all about. By the way, there was a very famous puzzle back in uh, 1930s made by Albert Einstein and it said that it is a puzzle which was solved which was solvable only by 1% people in the world at that time not now having said that the puzzle that Einstein created in 1930s the same puzzle in CAD now is a very easy puzzle I think IQ has developed or maybe education system has developed by the way coming to next that is missing value table so <clears throat> As a thing, as it suggests, missing value. So it can be kind of, let's say, a sport is going on, IPL is going on, and scores are given, different teams, different players, or whatever, and all data is given. Okay, let's say Virat Kohli faced 50 balls and hit a 70. So 50 might be missing, 70 might be there. And depending on different kind of um, statements, you will have to fill the tables and answer the questions accordingly. Selection-based puzzle, as the name says, selection so there are certain cues given to you to select certain elements that is how this puzzle is made lrda lrndi based caselets caselet is basically kind of literature <clears throat> it can be one or two paragraphs with different things will be given to you mentioned to you and based on that we'll have to make a table out of that and then we have to solve the entire entire case um, by the way in all this in all of this except missing the table we need to form proper tables that is very important Coming to second is, that is Venn Diagram. So Venn Diagram, it was uh, developed in medieval age by a mathematician named Venn. Uh, the surname was Venn. And he said, he, he was of the opinion that all these sets, what are sets? Mathematical sets, a set is collection of elements. It can be numbers, it can be uh, um, names, it can be anything, any data elements. So those are inside a set, this is a set, curly brackets. and any kind of operations on set, be it union, intersection, commonality, all those things can be solved by drawing rectangles and circles. So that is what Venn diagram is all about. You can have two sets Venn diagram, three set Venn diagrams, or four set Venn diagrams as well. This two set, which I draw, which I just uh, drew here, that is, this is three set. And this rectangle represents the everything, everything. Let's say this is set A, this is set B, and I'll give you an example. So one, two, five, seven. Let's this is the entire set. So one is here, two is here, five is here, seven is here. That means set A contains two and five, set B contains five and seven, and one is something which is not uh, contained by either A or B. So that is how you can uh, actually interpret the data. In three sets, same thing will happen. In four sets, it looks quite weird. Uh, four set Venn diagram, something like this, and uh, you have to solve it. By the way, <clears throat> all these things, all the uh, methodology, all kind of questions, will be given to you in form of LRDA inception and LRDA 70. Then comes subset Venn diagram. Subset is, as I said, like A here is subset of this entire set. A subset contains some elements or all the elements of the given universal set. So based on that, we can have different kind of questions. Multiple diagrams in one set, that can happen. Let's say um, one Venn diagram is not sufficient to answer any question. You'll have to take different cases. This is a possibility. 
certain tables, certain uh, entries are missing. So you need to create two or three diagrams in some, some cases and we'll also have questions based on these things. Next, quant based DILR. When I say quant based, that means it's mathematical. So in DI and LR, there'll be <coughs> sets based on any, anything which is in quant, PNC, stats, number system, arithmetic, geometry, is very rare, but these things can come. Now, <coughs> how it comes? Have you seen Sudoku? Of course you have. Sudoku is nothing but a quant based DI puzzle. All right, so you'll be given some information, you have to fill in the value of Sudoku. What we have normally seen is three by three Sudoku, nine by nine Sudoku. So there can be different kinds of Sudoku. It can be four by three also. So we have created sets on that. And that is what quant based puzzle essentially means. And the data will be given to you in terms of like, what I said right now, it's arithmetic. Sudoku is an arithmetical or number system based uh, uh, quant based DI. In PNC or stats, it can be given to you that, okay, <clears throat> certain experiment is happening. What's the, and the probability of having it is 0 0.9. Probability of some other thing is 0 0.3. All that will be given in terms of some table and you have to interpret the data and answer the questions accordingly. Then games and tournaments. So essentially we have two kinds of uh, tournaments. One is ro round robin, other is knockout. So in knockout what happens? Two teams, let's say there are 16 teams and two play one who loses is knocked out. They will be eliminated. In round robin, every team plays against every other team and based on the points given, points can be different depending on sets. It can be plus two for win, one for draw, zero for loss. Based on that, we'll have to create an entire table and answer the questions. Chessboard puzzles. Um, it rarely comes, but I've seen um, some gambits. You know what is a gambit? Gambit is a, is a kind of an arrangement, a move of certain Pawns can be there, queens, uh, queen can be there, king, bishops. And based on that, you have to actually uh, kind of interpret it, what is the best move possible. By the way, you must be thinking, I don't know how to play chess. How can I answer this? So in that case, they'll be giving you entire directions at what, what kind of move a pawn or a bishop or a queen or whatever is there in the, in the puzzle. They will be giving you how they move and what all, what all conditions are there. So there's no need to <clears throat> start playing chess to solve this. Team composition. So team composition, team composition puzzles actually. Team composition is like, they can be, <clears throat> let's say five men, six women, three children, and based on you have to compose some team. And uh, that team will be playing against other teams. So all these things will be coming in the disc. And uh, point system. So point system is again, <clears throat> as I told you earlier also in round robin, um, for winning you get some points, for drawing you get some points and for losing you get zero points uh, while in draw, in, what happens? Basically let's say I am A and you are B, we are playing against each other and for let's say I win, I get plus three, you get zero. But if, if let's say we both draw, we get 1.5 each. So essentially what is happening here in draw, draw basically makes the case very complex because both the teams will be getting some points, but in other loss or draw. So wins, let's say there are five wins in a tournament, that means there'll be five losses as well. Because if one person, one team wins, other has to lose. In case of draw, that doesn't happen. That can, that can make things complex. Next, data interpretation. <clears throat> as the name says, data, what is data? Data is meaningless or random collection of uh, elements variables, uh, names, places, numbers, that is data. Interpretation, like how we will be interpreted to, to derive a meaningful information. So data is represented in different ways. Uh, special charts, I'll discuss about that. Pie chart, so pie is basically circular. You must have <clears throat> seen apple pie, chocolate pie. Pie is circular, the angle around is 360 degree. So based on this, there'll be different sectors. And uh, let's say the production value let's say one, two, three, four, four companies are there producing some kind of uh, raw material and uh, this is producing 10 million units, this is producing like 15 million units and so on. So this is how data is represented and based on that, there'll be meaningful information which we have to decipher and answer the questions. Bar charts, bars. Bars can be vertical, bars can be horizontal. Basically they are horizontal and in case of vertical bars, we call them column graphs, but bar charts and column graphs are essentially same. Stack bar. Stack bar is, so this is, let's say, y and x axis. This is one bar, another bar, one more bar. So <clears throat> instead of, and, and let's say I want to represent four companies by one bar diagram. Production of four companies in four, three different years. 
let's say this 2001, 2002, 2003, there are four companies. So would I make four different diagrams? I can, of course, I can have four, four different uh, bar charts. But stack bar charts, they are focused on, uh, on giving data in just one bar chart. How is that done? This is the length of the bar. So four, one, two, three. They'll have four different divisions. This is, let's say, 10, this is 20, this is 30, and this is, let's say, 50. So basically, this company will have 10 units, this will have 20 minus 10 units, and so on. That is what stacking essentially means in <coughs> data interpretation. Line charts, <coughs> as you have seen, you must have seen, um, a line chart goes like this. There's a line, that's a point of consideration. One more point, another point, and so on. So these points are basically data elements which we are concerned about. Scatter plots, scattering. What is meant by scattering? Let's say <coughs> I have a lot of dots with me and I just threw it on the paper and they got scattered. So scatter plots just look like this. One, two, there can be multiple things here. The main problem with scatter plots is that they have a lot of data elements, a lot of them. It can be positive here, negative here, it depends. I'll give you an example. So let's say an, a shopkeeper is making profit by selling different goods at different time intervals. So these are the profitable goods. These are the goods in which he's incurring loss. So this is a basic example. We can have more such complex sets and scatter plots. The main problem here is the lot of data elements are there and how to look at this, how to solve it. That is what we're going to do in the LRD Inception and LRD 70. Histogram is very much similar to bar charts. It's just that in Histogram, like in bar charts I, show, uh, I showed you, there, is, there are gaps here, right? Histogram, we don't have any gaps. This is what it looks like. So, <clears throat> nothing much here, but it's just a data representation technique. So in totality, we'll be having 70 LRDI sets by Mr. Indrajit Singh. There'll be 50 sets, high quality sets in LRDI inception and 65 sets in terms of videos for your practice. Now, the next thing which we're starting in 20th September is the iQuanta crash course. The details are as follows. There will be classes, night classes, all day practice. There'll be nine workshops, three each on Quant, LRDI and VARC. And these workshops will be having really moderate difficult level CAT relevant questions. In just VRC module, it is for those who do not have very proper command on the language, English language basically. Non-engineer QA module, the people who have forgotten mathematics because they haven't studied into class 12th, maybe in graduation. 35 full length CAT mocks, 45 sectionals, that means 15 sectionals for each each section, QA, LRD and VRC. 10 non-CAT mocks, which will be covering NMAT, other, other, other uh, management exams. Marathons, so most important topics in quant are geometry, algebra and arithmetic, and we'll be having marathons, three marathons of these topics. QA 250 series, 250 high quality questions of quant, LRD 70 that we've talked already. VRC, genre-wise RC videos will be given to you. And in addition to it, there will be dual pedagogy. So once things will be discussed to you in terms of live interactive session, which faculty will be visible to you, and in the night, the same day, there'll be application of what we have, whatever we have done in the live classes with 24 7 doubt support throughout the crash course if you have any doubt just take a screenshot paste it post it on the facebook group and you'll get the resolution within 8 to 10 minutes shortcuts and concepts and mock analysis will be there so mock analysis is done via an ai enabled mock platform it's india's first platform for any kind of cat coaching in which there will be different kind of trackers error trackers goal trackers and based on that you'll be able to analyze a mock in at least half or one third of time which you take normally so what are you waiting for See you in the classes.